Apple's about to bring some serious vibe coding energy into Xcode with Anthropic. Reddit just upgraded its search with actual AI brains. And Google? They're giving chatbots to kids under 13. New York is testing AI to spot crimes before they even happen. Idogram 3.0 is generating images so real it's kind of creepy. NVIDIA dropped a stealth cybersecurity system for AI factories. OpenAI had to roll back ChatGPT after it got too nice. And now you can fact check your uncle's WhatsApp rants in seconds. Every part of your digital life just got weirder, smarter, and way more intense. So let's talk about it. So Apple. After trailing behind a bit in the AI race, they're now teaming up with Anthropic to bring some serious vibe coding energy into Xcode. Bloomberg says they're testing this internally using Anthropic's Claude Sonnet model, and it's way more than just autocomplete. It can actually write, edit, and even test code through a chat interface. Just describe what you want, and it gets to work. If you're a vibe coder who likes to build through intuition and prompts instead of typing out every line, this could be a game changer. Apple hasn't confirmed a public release yet, but if it drops, it could shake up the whole dev scene on Mac OS. Funny enough, this isn't their first shot. They announced Swift Assist back at WWDC 2024, but it's still nowhere to be seen. On top of that, their upgraded Siri got delayed and handed over from their AI chief to Mike Rockwell, the former Vision Pro lead. So yeah, Apple's clearly trying to recalibrate, and Claude might just be their ticket back into the spotlight. Meanwhile, Reddit just gave its search bar a brain. They're rolling out Reddit Answers, an AI-powered feature that's now integrated into Reddit's main search. Before, you had to go to a separate tab to use it, but now it's right up front. Basically, instead of typing Best Gaming Chair Reddit into Google, now you just search directly in Reddit, and you get curated responses with actual posts, tips, and links from real users. CEO Steve Huffman said the goal is to help people get to those real, lived opinions faster, especially new users who might not know how to navigate the site. Reddit's pushing hard to become a destination for answers, not just a comment section. And the timing is perfect, honestly, with Google getting crowded and messy. This could seriously change how people search the internet. And now let's talk about New York City's subways, because AI might soon be watching more than just your commute. Michael Kemper, the MTA's chief security officer, says they're looking into using AI to detect potentially dangerous behavior in real time. Cameras are already installed in every subway car and platform, and now AI could monitor that footage to catch problems before they escalate. They didn't say which companies they're working with or exactly what the system would flag, but facial recognition isn't part of it, for now at least. The idea is to send alerts to security or police the moment something looks off. And let's not forget, crime on the subways actually dropped by 5.4% last year, which is more than the 3% drop across the rest of the city. Still, there were 10 murders on the subway in 2024. So yeah, the stakes are high. LA and Chicago have already started testing similar AI tools, even using them for weapons detection and illegal parking on buses. It's all part of this growing trend. AI isn't just writing code or drawing images anymore. It's literally becoming part of our public safety systems. Speaking of AI tools going public, Google's taking things to a whole new level. They're launching their Gemini chatbot for kids under 13. Starting next week, kids with Google Family Link accounts will be able to chat with Gemini, ask it questions, get help with homework, or even make up stories. Google says they've added special guardrails to make sure the chatbot doesn't show unsafe content and that the data won't be used to train future AI models. But let's be honest, this is a big move. UNECF and other children's groups have warned about exactly this. Kids often can't tell that these chatbots aren't human, and if a bot makes up an answer, which we all know happens, that could get messy fast. Google sent out emails to parents warning them that Gemini can make mistakes and suggesting they teach their kids to fact check what the bot says. They're trying to be transparent, even saying that some inappropriate stuff might still slip through. So while this sounds helpful on paper, it's going to raise a lot of questions about privacy and child safety. Remember, this is the same industry where Meta had to cancel Instagram kids after backlash. So yeah, bold move, Google. Now let's shift gears and talk about something a little more hands-on, AI image generation. Adiogram just dropped version 3.0 of their image generator and it's seriously leveling up. Not only are the images way more photorealistic now, but they also nailed prompt diversity. You can throw the same prompt in three times and get totally different high quality outputs. Plus they've added two killer tools, Magic Fill and Extend. Magic Fill lets you change or add parts of an image, kind of like Photoshop's generative fill, but faster. Extend lets you stretch an image beyond its original frame, which is great for creating ads, posters, or anything that needs a bigger canvas. 
This version also supports a new style reference system, where you can upload up to three images to guide the look of what you're generating. And there's a style library with 4.3 billion presets. Yeah, billion. The API is now available for businesses and it's already integrated into platforms like FreePick, PixArt, and Crea AI. So if you're doing creative work with AI, Idagram 3.0 is probably something you'll want to check out. By the way, if you're into this kind of stuff, we've got a free community on School where we recently dropped our first free course all about AI avatars. And more free courses are on the way. We also run an advanced school group for those of you who want to go pro with Gen AI and actually make money using it. In the next few days, we're releasing a brand new course in that pro community too, so check the video description for links to both groups. And now let's talk cybersecurity, because NVIDIA is stepping in hard with a new tool called Doka Argus, and it's designed specifically to protect what they're calling AI factories. These are basically environments where large-scale AI workflows run, and they're super complex. Doka Argus operates on NVIDIA's Bluefield networking platform and provides real-time threat detection at speeds up to 1,000 times faster than traditional agentless tools. What makes it so effective? It runs outside the host system. That means attackers can't even see it. There's no agent to install, nothing to compromise, and no drag on performance. This is a big deal for containerized environments, especially those using NVIDIA NIM microservices. Cisco is actually partnering with NVIDIA to create a secure AI factory architecture, embedding security from the ground up, not as an afterthought. The platform integrates seamlessly with existing SIEM, SOAR, and XDR systems, and it filters out false positives by focusing on real threats using NVIDIA's own threat intelligence. As AI becomes more critical to business operations, securing it has to evolve too, and Daca Argus seems like a big step in that direction. Now let's wrap it up with something that's been making waves all over social media, OpenAI's recent GPT-40 update and how badly it backfired. Basically, after the update, ChatGPT started agreeing with literally everything. Users noticed it was being way too agreeable, even supporting clearly wrong or harmful ideas. And yeah, the internet went wild. People were sharing screenshots of ChatGPT nodding along with the craziest stuff. Sam Altman, OpenAI's CEO, admitted the update missed the mark and they rolled it back almost immediately. The issue? Sycophancy. The model was trying too hard to be nice, and that's dangerous when millions rely on it for advice, some even legal or medical. OpenAI says over 60% of US adults have used ChatGPT for information or guidance. So yeah, this isn't just a small glitch, it's a real trust issue. They've now promised a bunch of changes, new testing phases, better transparency, stricter safety reviews, and even the ability to choose different model personalities. They're also adding real-time feedback so users can help shape how the model responds. What's clear is that OpenAI knows they can't mess around with updates anymore. As AI becomes more personal, the stakes get a lot higher. And last quick one, if you're on WhatsApp and someone shares something that sounds a little too wild to be true, you can now fact check it without leaving the app. Perplexity AI just launched a new integration where you can forward any message to their number, plus 1-833-436-3285, and it'll instantly fact check the claim. Works with over 20 languages, gives you source links, and doesn't need any fancy setup. Just save the number, hit forward, done. Whether it's a fake quote, a weird news story, or that one uncle's theory about garlic water curing baldness, you can now call it out, quietly if needed. Perplexity might even start popping into group chats soon, just like MedAI does. So yeah, AI is now your group chat's quiet referee. So here's the real question. Should we be cool with kids chatting with AI while AI itself watches over our subways and fact checks our private messages? Let me know what you think. Smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're into this kind of chaos, and thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.